What's going on, everybody? It is Luke. Uh, today we're talking about how to find potentially products that are unavailable that you can look to obviously make some decent profits on. Not just you know okay profits, but decent profits. So I'm going to run over an example of this Bovril stock Q pack thing, right? Obviously, if you look at the keeper data, historically it's been you know around 16 pounds, even 12 here. You, you kind of get the gist, right? <clears throat> but as you can see. Over time, and more recently, it's been harder, and I've been selling this, you know, more volume back here, right? It's been harder and harder to actually get stock of this. So, for example, it started off with most of the supermarkets and various other places having them, but not having much in stock, or they were going, they were disappearing from the website and coming back on the website, various things like that. And over time, I was able to get a handful, you know, like five, six ASINs worth, which is, you know, fine, but it's not really what you want and so on and so forth and as you can see obviously like always the price went up right so when i could get this it was like yep yeah, awesome nice you know five four pound profit or whatever um and it's better than you know it's better just to add it in you know it's, it's not going to do anything overall but you know it's nice to have right so then obviously it started to get to the point where there was like no sellers you can kind of see this little sort of segment here yeah no buy box but no sellers because people were pricing it are uh, you know 38 quid up here and stuff like that so what i was like thinking is like you know what really if there's a way to find this product even if it's you know in in like 10 hastens worth there's potentially a decent amount of profit here because you know when it gets down to no sellers or you or one seller you can decide what you price it at and you know if you haven't got a lot of hastens anyway it doesn't matter that you're trying to potentially get a little bit more profit because you can't get any more or you can't get a lot anyway. So it doesn't matter if you sell them slowly because you can't, you know, the, the risk isn't the supply out there. So over time, all of the retailers basically got the product removed. It ended up just disappearing and more and more, you know, it was harder and harder to get obviously uh, for the last, you know, month or something or even more than that, six weeks, eight weeks. And kind of you know it's a bit a better picture here harder and harder people were getting some but it was just getting harder so i started to look around think you know is that is it it's kind of a stand product right it's kind of like nothing fancy about it you know where can i look for this product and you can even well these prices are relevant but that at the retail price this it wouldn't have been this uh like at standard retail price it was kind of about 15 pounds here um so what i did is i actually started to look around and i found two websites Essentially, that can be used just not forever. So not, you know, literally forever and ever. But when things are getting tough and you can see, you know, you, you can clearly visibly see that the availability of stock is dwindling across every platform. All retailers, all wholesalers, it's either it wasn't a wholesaler, now it's not. Or they've only got a little bit in stock or, you know, whatever the issue, the thing is, right? Uh, same with like, you know, Cardo, Sainsbury's, blah, blah, blah. And then what I thought is, okay, let's, let's see what we can do. So I, I found two websites. One's called McGrosser and one's called British, Ho uh, British Food Wholesaler. Now, they're not particularly the cheapest, so most people wouldn't even want to buy off these websites because they're not cheap. And actually, this website, all they do is they basically go in. The, the easiest way I think of, think of it is you pay more for the products. They actually have staff that go out to the shops, like almost like resale arbitrage. And they go and do like a blanket run across all these. Basically, they have a list of products that they need to find, and they will go and buy them from retailers and wholesalers, all these webs, all these different places. So they go to B and Q, Costco, Wilco. They do have like a, a product sort of uh, category themselves, but you get you get the gist. It's a lot of supermarkets, and if you actually go into like the the sort of uh, details here, like. Nah. Doesn't actually say right off the bat, but there's a section, uh, FAQ or whatever it is, where you can go in. So, you know, if you're looking at some of these products, they're going to be overpriced. Same with this website here, overpriced. But I don't mind paying more for the product because I can basically control the price. As soon as I book in, I can control this price. So I put 20, uh, 29.99. I could have gone higher, right? And I probably should have. But at the same time, there is no there is no buy box at twenty nine ninety nine. You can kind of see here. I, basically, that's me. You can see at twenty nine ninety nine, and I sold. I only had about ten, and I sold them within you know a handful of days at no buy box. Because people really want this. I'm the only seller, right? And you know, yes, I could have probably 
put it at 39.99 and you can go as high as you want really but i'm not greedy it's you know ultimately it's not going to change it's going to make some nice profit per unit but it's it's not a lot of units that you can sell because you can't get a lot of it but why not if you know you've got not just one product like unavailable but you've got five products unavailable obviously you need to catch it at the right time you can't you know it's going to be harder if this a product's been unavailable for a year uh because it's most probably not oh sorry my bad it's probably not going to be um you know available anywhere when things have sort of been stopped to sell, be sell on, on websites whatever so i'm going to show you on here hopefully it's still on here it might not be because they probably get rid of it but i type in bovril and it's here it's actually they're actually on it's actually under two different uh links but it doesn't really matter you can see the price here at two pound 14. so obviously if we're going to do a six pack at 214 you're looking at 12 pound 84. now i've got 15.96 because they charge a lot for delivery so they're probably like mark is it mark marking up their delivery to make the profits on it because they're just sending it normal dpd or whatever it ends up being anyway and it's going to just be a box of food so it's not you know for them it's not going to cost for example on 30 or 40 units of this it could be 30 38 quid or 32 pound so on the products that i actually bought i bought this and a couple of other things it was at 16 quid well even at 29.99 and it, you could definitely price it higher right and now weirdly this comp doesn't actually show i think something's wrong with my browser um but what i did is i copied all this text that's really like a, a stupid way to do it and then i to the search bar go to the end and it shows you profit of six pound and one p there we go okay but it's zero percent vat food item so even at the buy price of this which is double what it would have been because obviously i'm um, yeah look 15.96 but it was selling at 15 quid so clearly that's not going to be profitable but it is now because you can actually six pound per unit times 10 at 60 quid in two days on uh like a 20 like a i don't know two minute purchase on the website right you know you're, you're selectively looking for specific products you're not going across all the products range and there might be products on their range that you actually could sell but you know it's pretty a bit too much work but looking specifically for unavailable or out of stock now there's going to be different if it's just if it's a temporarily unavailable product but over the last you know you can kind of see here as it, it was as it was going down and then coming back into stock it was just getting so harder and harder and harder and harder and many websites it was disappearing from their website totally so that kind of indication that they're not going to restock it right and it was getting worse and harder um and so basically i sold it at six pounds you know 60 quid profit right but it's, it's only a couple of minutes work and obviously you're not going to do that every day right it's like you could keep purchasing off the website now i tried to make another purchase of this and it doesn't work they basically just say that they can't source the products but i've had a little bit of correspondence back and forth and they basically say yep yeah, we've got people going out today looking for this product and you can kind of see here is the store name sainsbury's so i believe they're going around sainsbury's looking for this specific product and they're basically doing like a retail arbitrage kind of it's quite an interesting you know concept i don't you know if it's a feasible concept in terms of the potential turnover of this kind of thing because general public are they really going to be but ordering off here or they're just going to go to like a Sainsbury's, Wilco's, um, you know, and just doing it themselves, possibly. Like, why would you, you know, they basically re-aggregate. That's kind of what I mean. So they basically are like the middleman between you and the and the sold by company here. So it's an interesting concept and, you know, it might not last forever. But, you know, the same thing was was, was with British food wholesalers. They had the bovril as well. Yes, again, it will be the slightly different prices and all that. You have to work out what's viable and what's not, profitability-wise. But this is another little step I've added into my VA's um, training. I basically said that every week or every month, it just depends on how many units you sell, <clears throat> go through your inventory. Uh, obviously, it's zero stock, so it's you don't have to go through everything, but just the stuff that has zero stock. And look for any products that have unavailable or their, you know, it's kind of like this. And then that will put it on my radar because you don't want to, you, don't, you don't want to catch it late because you might not be able to get that product. You want to catch it around here, and then you know even if you buy ten products at that price, even if it starts to come back into stock, you can you know worst case break even to sell out of those ten units. It's not going to take long to sell ten units. Obviously volume wise, you've got two hundred, and then suddenly it comes back into stock everywhere and it starts to skyrocket up with uh, sellers. Yeah, that you might lose money, but that isn't the situation we're in. It's the situation is you can't get any stock, and it's, even if you could start getting stock. 
people start to buy that, ship to their prep centers and get it shipped into Amazon. So in that little interim, you can sell out of those 10 units or 15 or 20, whatever you're able to get your hands on. So I've been doing this on a selection of products and get my VA to go through all my inventory of zero stock, find anything that's basically really difficult to get where the price is obviously inflated and the sell price. And we're just, you know, going on some of these, uh, and there's a couple of other websites that are similar in terms of what they, how they pr uh, work. Um, and you can basically look to see if you can get them. And it's pretty much the same as doing retail arbitrage, right? Um, looking for products, but I can't do that. I'm in Lithuania. I can't go and do retail arbitrage. So I'm willing to pay a little bit of a premium to a company to do retail arbitrage for me. It's kind of an interesting concept, really. It's like having, uh, it's like, you know, I'm a, what's the word? I've got like a consultant, you know, when you pay, you know, paying someone like an hourly rate or whatever um, <clears throat> to go out and do some retail arbitrage for me on products that have, uh, you know, nice sell price, which is kind of what it is, right? So you're basically just temporarily hiring a retail arbitrage to go around and get your stuff for you. And then they're going to send it to you or send it to your prep center and everything's going to be the same as usual and if you process it and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much the video. It's just an interesting little extra step that you can do to add uh, potentially products um, with very good profitability. Yeah, not a lot, but you know, if you find a handful every month, that could be a couple hundred quid. A handful of products where you're able to get 10, 15 ASINs worth, and maybe you would never be able to get it again after, and that's possible, but an extra couple of hundred quid for you know five minutes work or 10 minutes work a, a month, isn't really a lot, right? Uh, and you know, and it's uh, in terms of time and everything, the VA doesn't have to spend a lot of time doing it. It's just for zero stock products. And obviously once you click onto a listing, it's very easy to see if it's uh, unavailable or not and that kind of thing. And then, you know, you just rinse and repeat that process and it just adds another little potential layer of margin onto your overall monthly sales for something that, you know, you may have not necessarily looked at or even thought of before. So I'll leave the video there. Hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time. Bye.